Really, really happy to be here today. Bonjour à tout le monde. Um, it's great to be at Startup Fest again. Um, I'm really happy to be introducing and running the pitch competition. Having pitched many companies of my own on stage, I know what entrepreneurs go through in preparing to try and convey their vision, their dreams for the company in three minutes and get the story across. So I know how much work goes into this and I really appreciate everyone being here to support them. So to get started, I'm gonna introduce our judges for this event. First up is my friend Isaac Suyen from Real Ventures, entrepreneur in residence. <laughs> Next we have Deborah Arbach from CBC. She's the anchor for Montreal News. Next up, Ravi Balani. He's the director of Alchemist Accelerator. We also have Montreal native David Brown, founder and the co-CEO of Techstars. And finally, the infamous and everywhere Sylvain Carl, partner at Real Ventures and the head of Founder Fuel. All right, so for the pitches, we are going to be introducing each company and they will have three minutes. I will be stopping them exactly at three minutes. So uh, we're gonna get up first. Hold on one second. All right, so first up we have Chris Erdhardt with Tunedly. Thank you. Hi, I'm Chris, the CEO and co-founder of Tunely, your collaborative online recording studio. That's me on the screen about 10 years ago trying to become the next hotshot in songwriting. Problem was, I thought my music sounded like this. Yeah, but none of the music publishers I tried to reach out, so they thought my music sounded more like this. It stank. Luckily, over the years, I got connected to some professional music producers who would listen to my music, and the advice I received was, if I want to compete, my music has to sound radio-ready with live instruments, polished vocals, and outstanding production quality. You know, DIY can impress friends and family, but if you want to swim with the big fishes, you better sound like one. Now, I never lived in any of the industry hubs, so naturally there weren't enough session musicians around me that I could hire. I was looking for solutions online, and I found a few studios that would allow me to send my lyrics and my instructions, and they would she recorded the song for me for $2,000 and within two months. Kind of like a mail order service for music production with no creative involvement or control by me whatsoever. I remember thinking, you know, this can't be it. And the idea of Tunedly started shaping out. Now today, there are an estimated 17 million musicians in the US alone facing the exact same problem. Luckily, today, they can simply go to Tunedly.com and choose their musicians from our roster of pre-vetted, award-winning session musicians. Enter our virtual recording studio, share notes, share work in progress, collaborate, all while creating a radio-ready sound. And now, introducing for the very first time here at the Montreal Startup Festival, starting next month, premium users can upload their music directly from Tunely to all major download and streaming platforms, as well as to artist and sync opportunities. It's just one more step towards our goal of leveling out the playing field for all musicians. Since launching our prototype in January 2016, we've generated nearly 200,000 US dollars in revenue. We're currently raising a seed round of $500,000, of which half is already closed. This seed round will get us to an um, annual revenue run rate of a million dollars by February 2018, which will put us in a strong position to raise a significant Series A round next year. Tunely already helped countless songwriters to sign publishing deals, with many more to come. So if you're a musician out here in the crowd, simply go to Tunely.com tonight and create your free account. And if you're an investor out here, talk to me after the pitch. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Chris. All right, judges, we've got two minutes for any questions or follow-up comments. How do musicians discover you? Um, do you mean the session musicians or the user musicians? The user musicians. The user musicians. We're currently um, trying to partner up with um, several music industry relevant companies and organizations. Um, that's basically our first 
source of, um, of incoming users right now. And how, how are you monetizing? What's the revenue model? The revenue model is um, we have a, a freemium kind of model where um, free members, they can basically hire musicians on an as-needed basis or on a um, premium model where they basically pay a monthly subscription and have access to X amount of session musicians. And what are the gross margins on the million? 50%. 50%. Yes. How do you weed through the musicians that you may hear from? How, how do you decide who gets on and who doesn't? The, the professional session musicians, sure. Um, we basically have a, um, a peer review in, in place where session musicians can apply, and then they're getting peer reviewed by other session musicians that are already onboarded, and that's how we basically seep through the applications of session musicians. And tell us a little bit about your team. Um, right now, it's myself and co-founder Mylene, um, who's working as a CMO. Our CTO is uh, Mark, who's based in New York, and um, we have two employees that are based in the US and in Canada as well. So we have everything from technology to marketing and business experience in the team. Any more questions? How big does this get? Yeah. Um, how big is? How big is this as, an, as a comp uh, Does this get in terms of what do you think the revenue looks like in five to seven years? Um, we're estimating that we will um, reach five hundred thousand dollars in revenue this year, and we're estimating that we're going to be at five million dollars next year. And by um, by twenty nineteen, we're going to reach twenty million dollars in revenue. Uh, who who are you stealing share from? Who who will lose when you win, and how do they feel about it? Say, say that again, please. Who are you stealing market share from? How Who are you re replacing, and how do they feel about it? Recording studios, mostly. Um, I mean, recording studios are on the decline already because there's lots of home studios that are coming up. Um, however, the music production quality is suffering through that. So that's basically what we want to bring back is, you know, traditional recorded live instrument music, but, you know, bring it over to 2017 with, modern, um, with a modern approach. Okay, great. Thank you. Everyone, thank you, Chris. Thank you. All right, next up we have Etienne Ben Suzanne from First Digital. Hi, my name is Etienne. I'm one of the founders of First Digital. We're partnering up with a fully licensed bank to create a new business banking alternative for Canadian startups and small businesses. We're creating a banking platform that lets small businesses bank, manage their finances, and integrate all their financial products in one place. Why? Because over 50% of small business owners report losing sleep at night due to the stress of managing their business's finances. That's 50%. It's because instead of building their business during the day, they're spending their time waiting in line at the branch, reconciling their books, searching for that needle in the haystack transaction, or actually figuring out what their cash flow is. Well, we at First Digital have come together for one common purpose, to empower these entrepreneurs by eliminating the pain and the frustration of financial management and banking. We do so by creating a banking service that acts as the finance department that these small businesses could never afford. We're doing it to allow these entrepreneurs to get back to doing what they love, whether that's building their business or spending time with their loved ones. I know this personally. I grew up with my grandfather, Mitchell Lieberman, who built his company, Diamond Electric, from scratch. I remember sitting on his knees as a five-year-old, watching him and my grandmother reconcile the books and manage their payments late into the night. One would think that 30 years later, things would be different but I've interviewed over 120 business owners across the continent, and some have broken down into tears, telling me about how painful it is to run their business's finances and deal with their bank. Well, that's who we're building First Digital for. We're building First Digital for the world of entrepreneurs that's emerging today, for whom a bank is fundamentally branchless, for whom financial management should be beautiful and intuitive the way that their favorite services and apps are, like Slack or Amazon. One where a bank that sits on all this data does something with it, provides them with insights into the health of their business and helps them improve it. And finally, a bank that can talk to them in a fundamentally human way despite being digitized. Well, we're really excited because since we launched our, our wait list in, Jan 26, in January of this year, it's been growing like 10% week over week. We now have 600 businesses that have asked for access to our beta platform and we haven't spent any money on advertising. So I invite you, the makers and builders of Startup Fest, to join us 
Tell us what you want from your bank partner of tomorrow. We want to know because we want to build it for you. Finally, we're raising our next round of funding in the fall. And for any of you, those of you who are interested, join us on our journey. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Etienne. Judges? Well, I'd like to ask you, I, I mean, I do my banking online. So I go to my app, and I can check out all of my transactions and whatever kind of needs I may have as far as banking is concerned, I actually do digitally. So how is it different? How is this different than what I find online now? So there's, there's three really important differences. First, in the life of a business, the, the way the needs that you have from a bank tend to be a lot more complex. And so a lot of that time requires phones and faxes and waiting in line, especially as the checks get bigger. The second one is that while there are a lot of online services available, they don't connect to the rest of that business's tools or people. And so there's always this loss of transaction. Every time you move across another platform, you've got to port your information. And then finally, a lot of these businesses just don't have the time because of the volume of that transaction matter that they need to engage the bank with. And so it actually is a complete uh, pain for them, whereas as a personal individual, every now and then we might just log in and log out, but we don't have that volume of need that they do. Um, so, so tell us a little bit about you know how you charge, how much money are you making? I saw the up and to the right slide, but I think it was number of banks. What kind of revenue is that generating? That slide was actually the wait list. Um, oh, sorry. So there's two components to the revenue model. First is a SaaS-based flat pricing. The idea is to take away the variability of business banking pricing and have one fee per month with all their transactions included. The second one, which comes a little later, is to actually be able to sell other financial products to them, but then manufacture our own for them based on our understanding of their financial needs because we actually have the data within our system. So when, uh, import, a key factor for me for choosing a bank is trust. How do you ensure that these businesses, like what's the trust that you're building for these businesses to trust you back in return? So we have one strategy we've already started. We've been launching free business tools into the ether for a few months now. We actually just launched Incorporation as a Service, where we're incorporating companies around the country to help them get started. These and a whole bunch of others that are coming out the gate are ways for us to socialize our name, our concept, early in advance and help give them value long before we ever ask for anything in return. The other one is just to execute flawlessly, never give them any reason to doubt you. Okay, great. Sorry, guys, gonna have to wrap that up. Thank you very much, Etienne. Hey, All right, next up we have Erica Hughes and Kathy Boy from CareFind. Hi, my name is Erica, and this is Kathy, and we are presenting to you CareFind access to childcare at your fingertips. I would like for you to meet my twin boys, Malik and Makai. In the past, I've experienced frustration in trying to find immediate and reliable childcare for interview purposes. I was waitlisted for several daycares and couldn't find two vacancies for one day. I'd exhausted my available means, such as family and friends, and called around to numerous daycares, and which was extremely time consuming. In the end, I missed out on my opportunity as I could not find childcare. I know this is an issue out there for many parents who are in seek of short, full-time and part-time care, as well as daycares are running under capacity. They're spending money on ineffective advertising, and most daycares registration process includes unnecessary labor hours for registration paperwork. CareFind web CareFind website service connects preoccupied parents with unpredictable schedules to real-time vacancy spots in nearby childcare facilities for part, full-time, and immediate requests. This reduces the time that parents would normally spend by housing all licensed and regulated daycares under the same network highlighting availabilities. This is a, this is a web page, which is our vision of our app. Um, daycares will potentially post their, highlight their availabilities online and parents can log in, search nearby daycares, reserve a spot, register online, book tours and read reviews. One of our biggest competitors out there is Cubby Spot. They have recently changed their service from locations of childcare to access to childcare locations. As well as Nannies on Call faces challenges around extensive lead times of four to six weeks and requires a nanny to come to your home. 
We then, we then interviewed 48 parents where we openly discussed our frustration and 100% needed time away from parenthood. And 61% were actively searching for childcare. We then interviewed 48 accredited daycares and learned that only 25% were implementing online registration. They stated that they were trying to transition their information to a more efficient digital platform. 38% of daycares were running under capacity and 13% had no website. Many daycares are currently searching for an effective alternative for advertising. According to Stats Canada, 7.1 million families use childcare in Canada. In just Calgary alone, there is 200,000 kids. Our revenue stems from our long-term placements, drop-ins, and, and advertising. The average drop-in daycare rate in Calgary is $90. What we plan to do is to take 10% off that day rate. So in January, we won the RBC Fast Pitch, and we're currently in a summer incubator program. Our next steps are to launch CareFind, app design, and to establish partners and reservations. We also plan to scale out to all the major cities across Canada. Since winning RBC Fast Pitch, our partners are MMP, McCarthy Tetra, and MarketGrade. Thank Sorry, you guys. so much. Yeah, Time thank you up. so much. We'd like to open the floor for any questions. Okay, just uh, under the wire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, judges, any questions? Uh, uh, so my question is your pre-product, is that right? Pardon me? Your, uh, your pre-product, meaning you haven't, uh, you haven't developed it yet? No, the app is um, going to be developed in the near future, within the next, within the next several months. So um, we have the University of Calgary who has offered their in-kind service um, with the help of the development of our webpage as well as our app. Yeah, and, and so have you thought a bit about is that, uh, is, is that outsourced to them? Is that somebody on your team? How's that going to work? So um, the, you know, yeah, the, we have um, the University of Calgary, yeah, they've, yeah. they've provided that service. So yes, um, it's outsourced to them. Awesome to have somebody to do all the development for you. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely, yeah, bootstrapping. <laughs> I'm not a parent myself, but if, if I were a parent um, and I was looking for a daycare for my child, I'd, I'd be fairly you know, sure that I'd, I'd want to interview the people uh, who are going to be taking care of my child. So this seems like more of a clinical process. So what, what kind of connection is there between the parent and the actual company that you, or, or daycare that you may find for them? So um, we, we decided to go with the accredited daycares because accredited daycares are licensed and regulated. They're mandated by the government. So we do know that they, have a, they must have an educational component for the child care givers that are in that center as well as nutritional programs and what have you. So parents are a lot more comfortable with sending their child to an accredited daycare as opposed to maybe searching online for a nanny or, or what have you. Um, so that's kind of, we found that parents are a lot more trustworthy when they have that there's some kind of policy policy or planning around um, daycares. And to add to that, daycares do have transition times for parents. So parents could bring their kids in, review, kind of interview kind of the staff that works there. And we also have a feature that we're going to want to add that allows parents to review and talk to other parents. Good. Last question. Uh, it, it, like you're going to launch in January of next year. Have you thought about how you could maybe go faster than that? Because uh, the, the technology, the marketplace that you're describing, many things exist like that. Like, how can you go faster? Uh, we're, it, it's waiting on the development of, I guess, the starting of the app. So once we get into the process of that, hopefully, we're hoping to start a lot sooner, but that was kind of like the worst case scenario we're looking at launching in early January. So if it can happen way before then, obviously that's something that we are going to push for. Pitches are for saying the best case scenario, just so you know. <laughs> oh, you stole my line. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. They're fine. All right, next up we have Willie G from Party On Demand. Ah! I'm so stressed out, trying to plan all of life's celebrations. I mean, I got little Susie's graduation. I got Ted's birthday party, and of course, football season is coming back. I would have planned a tailgating party for that. <sighs> I wish there was one easy solution for me to order all my party supplies, just as easy as booking an Airbnb. 
Wait, there is. Party on Demand is your one-stop mobile party supply shop, delivering the party to you in one hour or less. We deliver the three essential ingredients you need to wow your guests and have an incredible memorable party. We deliver food, talent, and decorations right to your door. Bam! <laughs> we make it happen easily with our partnerships from Uber Eats, Grubhub, and Postmates delivering that tantalizing food that's yummy, yummy in your tummy. <laughs> in addition to that, our friends over at Amazon Prime are hooking it up with our great, crazy curated party box that's delivered to your door. Plus, we have hooked up over 1,500 incredible talents of dancers, acrobatics, and even your own personal chef from Benihana, Katachi! <laughs> that's... <laughs> It all starts with the box. Party on Demand has already partnered with over 35 of the world's largest companies and brands that's going to give you the cool thing. Think of Pinterest meets Etsy, delivered in your box and all exclusive right to your door. Oh man, it's going down. Our app is simple and easy to use. And less than five clicks from your phone, your party is on. With over $251 billion in its licensing and rental industry, we know we're going to interrupt, disrupt this marketplace because over 800,000 people celebrate their birthday in the U.S. alone every single day, not including over 500,000 people that just have a great social and celebration as well. With that, Party on Demand situates ourselves between the sweet spot of affordability and convenience. Now, our revenue model was simple. Nowhere, and I mean nowhere, can you find food, talent, and decor delivered to your door same day for the incredible price. Wait for it. $299. Oh! Make it want to shake something. <laughs> We're asking for $1.5 million in exchange for 15% equity. This will give us a 15-month runway and yield profitably about $7.5 million. Party on Demand was inspired by my father, who passed away from cancer. But before he did, he said, son, celebrate life more often. Whether that's your job promotion or getting an A on a test or even crossing the street, celebrate life every single day. Now you don't have to stress no more or wonder how to put on a really cool party and impress your friends. We can do it for you. I'm Big Willie G, the CEO of Party On Demand, and we're helping you, 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 and your best friend sit next to you to party on. So call us, and I'll see you at the party. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> All right, I'll let the judges weigh in. I dare somebody to ask the first question. <laughs> are, are you free to MC the next Founder Fuel demo day? <laughs> Absolutely. Just call me up. <laughs> we'll be honored. Okay, I'll ask a real question. Like, uh, that was amazing, by the way. Uh, Thank you. Are you in market? Do you have revenue? Yes, so we've already generated over $150,000 in less than four months in our stealth mode, private beta mode, after you speak, in Los Angeles, California. Okay, and will you be only in California, or will you be oh, expand no. to we, other this markets? This is a worldwide play. Everybody likes to party, and including us. <laughs> so we're looking forward to start there in Los Angeles and quickly grow. That's why we in Canada. Montreal, make some noise! Yeah! Yeah! Party time. <laughs> Mercy, mercy, mercy. That's the only word I learned. That's the only word I learned. I'm sorry. You are a force, and I would never want to go against you or bet against you, but um, to, to get to the, uh, the, the, the numbers, can, yes. do you have the unit economics in terms of how much does it cost you to acquire a customer, and of the two ninety nine, what's the contribution back, and so how long does it take for you to recoup? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So we built in a total of 50% profit margins overall, right? So out of our 299, it only costs us $150 to land the box to the door to the consumer and $150 come back to the company. We're really excited about that. Our curated party boxes have a 70% 70, 70 profit margin put into them. So it only costs us $20 to $25 to create a curated experience for the consumer. To acquire them, we're only working with our Facebook ads at the moment. And right now we're currently hovering around $5 to $7 uh, per CAQ. So, so I'm, 
I'm, I'm going to avoid the temptation to ask you if you drink coffee. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so as you expand into new markets, yes. right, I wonder, is Willie G the force of nature that makes it possible? And uh, have you thought about how to clone that into other locations? Because I'm not sure that's easy. No, I, I concur. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> but yes, that's the most important thing. Our opportunity for our platform is to encourage and nurture great people who just want to inspire, have a great time, and more importantly, celebrate life responsibly. And we feel party on the man will be that platform, allowing them to do that, and hopefully have a million Willie G's out here. Are oh, great. Thank, Thank you, you awesome. very much, Willie. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have Jen Yang from Quantivate. Hi. Hello, everybody. I'm Jen Yang from Quantivate. We are building an IoT home testing platform. We focus on an accurate and personalized fertility home monitoring system. We are FDA registered. We currently have 26 employees. And we focus on the China and the US uh, home, uh, home testing market for several reasons. First of all, uh, the infertility rate are increasing in the US, 6% already. In China, Due to the environmental issue, it's almost 15%. And all the current market available solutions, they are not satisfying. They cannot predict the cycle variabilities in a personalized way. And our product has three components. First, uh, a test strip can sampling the urine, and a handheld device can read out the fertility hormones. And our app can do the analysis and connect with the doctors. We have four different value propositions. First, the superior accuracy is achieved by a quantitative immune IC. And then our app can do the personalized, uh, provide personalized insight. And uh, our app also can do uh, the connections with the, the user and doctors provide telemedicine service. And your data can be tracked automatically and tracked for a long term. Uh, our sales will be direct to consumer, go through online, and uh, with doctor recommendations. The additional revenues come from the telemedicine data and ad sales. So after two years development, we have almost finished the product and it's ready for mass production. We currently have uh, 11,000 square feet GMP to ensure the quality which is uh, ISO 13485 certified. And we have filed 14 different IPs. And we won several awards, including the first place of uh, Inuit Her, hosted by the US government. And our product is clinically validated by more than 200 patient samples. And this is our team. I'm the CEO, PhD in physics. Our CEO got her uh, MBA from Columbia. Uh, and mass, um, MBA from Cornell, uh, master from Columbia. And our, our co-founders are the industrial actors. And that's it, that's a quantum weight, well, FDA registered, accurate, and personalized home fertility testing platform. We are going to launch this product by the end of this year. Thank you. All right. Judges, questions? So I think there's a number of home fertility products in the market. Can you talk a bit about competition and how you're differentiated? Okay, we differentiated in first accuracy and then IoT concept. We can do the tracking and also telemedicine, connect the user with the doctors. But, but is that sort of, uh, it, the accuracy is substantiated by research or how, how do I know as a consumer, as a purchaser of the product, that the reason I want to get yours is because of the superior accuracy? Uh, yeah, the superior accuracy is validated by third parties and also the agencies like FDA to approve that. But just on that, what, what's the extent of the accuracy benefit versus alternatives? Is it, are you talking about, uh, is it an order of magnitude better? What's the false positive and false negative rate versus the next best alternative? Okay, so compared with the current market available, we, uh, we do uh, several times better uh, accuracy. Seven times better? Yeah, seven times better than that. Uh, I have a question. So the telemedicine part is interesting because I don't usually 
get my doctoring from my, from my, I mean, not that I buy fertility products a lot, but like I would expect to, that my doctor would not be the same person who sold me the device. So is that the idea that like, I, what is the telemedicine component? Like I get the test and then I get online and talk to someone about it? Uh, yes. So basically the, when the user using this product, they have several, some questions and they, with our app, they can easily get answered by the telemedicine doctors. So not necessarily be the same doctor recommend the, the, the product. Okay. What, what kind of par partnerships are you looking at to, to go to market? Uh, uh, sales channels and also the telemedicine provider like uh, Teladoc, EVZ, this kind. Great. Thank you very much, everyone. Sure. Another round of applause. <laughs> Next up, we have Adolf Akufu Afool. Good afternoon, my name is Adolf Akufa Affle with The Hive, and today I'm gonna to be talking about a new and innovative way to store your food. So, how many of you guys have been through these situations by raising hands? The refrigerator from hell. Looking inside there, oh, there we go, one right over there, two, three, four, all right, yeah, cool. Um, you see it's super stacked, no one ever puts anything in there, I mean, everyone puts everything in there, but you keep on just throwing more stuff in and in, and then just never gets empty. Or, that one guy at work, always stealing everyone's food for no reason, just wants to eat it. Or maybe no storage place whatsoever in one of these either locations. Hostels, dorm rooms, university campuses, you just never know where to store your food. So today I wanna to talk to you about The Hive. Our mission is to create harmony and provide access to refrigerated storage compartments that are cost effective. Introducing The Hive. A refrigerated storage unit that has individual compartments for you to store your food in. It's also PIN and ID authenticated and has a process where you have to use your PIN or ID to actually use the compartments. At the same time, it's also accessible by mobile app. You can create um, a login by logging into our mobile app. From there, it'll teach you how to use the unit and you can pick a specific location, a compartment, and also book your unit prior to actually coming on site and many other features, as you can see. So next, I wanna to talk to you about a few product reviews we've had so far. Um, looking at people from individual sectors such as urban entrepreneurship, um, commuter outreach, and supply chain management, they see the Hives unit. So for our competitors, we have GE and Fitness and ISO, who kind of more or less go towards retail stores, the masses, and fitness professionals. We want to target organizations. By targeting organizations, we're able to use their consumers and employees that may need our units in order to actually store their food in and securely. We see we have two revenue models. One, the shared revenue model, where we give universities and hostels um, a piece of the transaction cost per day. So we have a 60-40 split, we keep 60% and they keep 40, and from there we can use it in order to clean the services and also take care of maintenance. The other one is more of a direct revenue model where we just charge a flat rate fee. In order for us to expand throughout North American market, we have calculated the amount of businesses they may need our product, and as you can see, it's quite a lot. Um, we believe we can have a possibility of a market revenue of $1.8 billion added or to the already $7.6 billion market in North America alone in refrigeration. And we want to expand into the following medical fields. Oops, sorry. All right, so meet our team comprised of William Johnson, Khadijah Williams, Chelsea, Adolf Kufafel, Mavis. All right, thank you very much. We got questions now. Um, so I think you were saying that you're initially going to sell to hostels and universities. Yes, hostels. How are you going to do that? What you going to hire salespeople? Or are you going to have oh, no. distribu oh. distribution? Sure can. Uh, we've already kind of targeted in our. I live in Rochester, New York, and we've targeted a few schools there that want to buy our units. So you see a lot of commuters come there and actually have nowhere to store their food. Um, so we've been targeting just going up to them and seeing whether we can place them at their schools and stuff. And they usually say yes. Um, from there, we're still working on the whole concept in order to actually bring it to life there. We've also talked to hostels. They don't really have any place to store food. They mostly want people to go out and eat, but they see a, they see a need for it. So they said they would also put it there and also will just share the profits in order to actually have it on location and they'll take care of it. 
Does the product exist? Uh, and if not, when will it exist? <laughs> gotcha. All right, the product doesn't exist at the moment, but we're working with a few manufacturers out in Hunan, China at the moment, but we want to kind of bring it over to the U.S. on a later point. Why do you want to bring it to the U.S.? What's wrong with China? Not, nothing is wrong with China. We just want to kind of have more of a communication, so more or less be able to do, see it from like right there and work on it as it happens. Hostels and universities don't have a lot of money. Exactly. So that's where the shared revenue plan comes in. So we kind of install it there, and from there, we, more students come there and use those units. But you're getting the money then from the students? Yes. Um, most of our money is being made by the students um, doing the transactions. But if we put is it, Are the students buying stuff, or is it, are they renting the... They're renting, they're renting the, the compartments. Yeah. But even students have a pretty low willingness to pay. Actually, okay, so students pay about $7 per lunch. And each time it's like, you know, $7 times five times a week, times four times a month, right there. And that one month alone, they've paid for the whole semester of using our unit. And is the vision always going to be to rent? Are you ever going to go into vending? Where you're no. going to be? Yes, yeah, so yeah. we want to go into vending at a later point and work with um, Crickler, which is out in um, America at the moment. And we want to kind of just lease it through them to be in hospitals. So in most places where uh, people might stay for a longer time, they can put it in there. And what's the cash conversion cycle? So how much cash up front do you have to invest to instrument a hostel, fridge? And then when do you recoup that? Sure can. Um, 2500 in order to actually install it on site. And we, we're looking to recoup it in about a month and a half. OK, great. That was our last question. Thank you very much. All right. Our last company is going to be Ritan Kabarda with VixMix TV. Hi. I am Ritam Karbanda, co-founder at Bimix. Let us begin uh, with uh, looking at the GoPro success story. GoPro uh, was launched in 2002, but has become a famous brand in the last four years. Part of that success was delivered by their YouTube reviews from 1.6 billion views that were generated by 6,000 videos created by their own users. How did GoPro do this? GoPro did this using a marketing campaign that used rewards and recognition to motivate users to create content, moderated it, and then shared it on social media to increase brand engagement and product awareness. However, GoPro is not alone. Um, it is a known fact that if there is video involved on the product page, you can increase sales by up to 85%. And 90% consumers want to see how other people have used that product. But there is no easy way to do this. GoPro had a homegrown solution, but there is no out of the box way for a brand to capture and utilize customer videos to further their brand. Vimix is an out of box solution that lets you do just that. We help you capture stories, moderate them using a machine learning algorithm and then track and reward influencers and share this on social media and circle back with the results of your campaign. This is a screenshot of our prototype that we have uh, available at the moment. We estimate the market capacity to be $8 billion. This is a new and upcoming segment. Uh, we see competition indirectly from influencer market solutions like Famebit and enterprise review products like Bazaar Voice. Also, some homegrown uh, solutions and video solution companies that don't really help you source customer stories, which is where we come in and fill in the gap. At the moment, we have a closed beta available. Uh, we have 300 plus beta signups. Uh, we are onboarding these customers, and we have $10,000 in ad hoc revenue at the moment. We are also looking for strategic partnerships and people to work with us to try our product. Like FindCare that presented earlier today could have solved their validity problem by using our product, by introducing videos on their, on their uh, app from uh, childcare providers, which would work as word of mouth marketing uh, to help ensure that, uh, that uh, parents know who their child is going to be with. Introducing the team. The team uh, consists of me, uh, Dean, uh, who is a tech and data geek. Also, Madusha, who handles our marketing and growth hacking. Uh, we are looking for other people to join us. All right. 
just under the wire. Judges, any questions for Retan? Uh, uh, if you could just tell me in a sentence what your company does, uh, just for a layman like me, what, uh, what exactly, it, who is your company sort of designed for and, and, and what, do you, what is it exactly? In, in just one sentence. My company can help a brand collect user stories, customer stories, and showcase them on their site, on their online presence, app, et cetera, to further their brand and create more brand engagement. And, and I think you gave, you gave a traction slide that had some dollars and talked about partnerships. Yes. But can you tell us more about the traction related to those user stories, how many are there, is it working, um, or is it too soon to tell? Uh, we, have, uh, we have done a pilot with a few customers uh, who have tried our product and uh, have gone to um, successfully run their, successfully run, uh, in one case, a fitness center uh, with the partnerships with strategic partnerships on their online presence. He's also um, using his online brand to sell affiliate partnerships with other fitness brands and sell merchandise as well. Uh, we are working with uh, other folks who uh, like, um, uh, like the slide I showed you, uh, Kushman and Wakefield, who used our platform uh, to generate awareness about a new facility they are building for startups uh, for AI. And you mentioned machine learning. How does that come into play? Uh, the machine learning uh, is used for tagging and categorizing and also quality checking the uh, videos to make sure they are relevant before they even get to a manual moderation stage. Great. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. One last round of applause for all the companies who came and presented. And I'd also like to thank our judges.